thank you for tuning in to this pattern haul. The patterns we will be covering today are McCall's M7985, Simplicity S9545, Simplicity's S9470. If you already know how to do my sew alongs, and if you will be kind enough to watch at least one of the ads, should they pop up so I can keep giving you free content, feel free to skip ahead to the three minute, 30 second mark to go straight to the sew along. Here's a little bit about how I do my sew with me sew alongs. For techniques, I'm gonna put it on the website and I will reference it in the sew along itself. So for example, we just did, we're working on a pair of pants that has a fly front. So, when we get to that portion in the sew along, I'll do a little bit of it, you know, and instructions in the sew along itself, but then I'm going to refer you over to the website to go ahead and look at that video, that particular video, look it over, you know, um, study it, do your own sample if you want, because you know, I'm big on that technique binder. So go ahead and, you know, and do that. And then once you get a good hang of, um, what that technique is, then come back onto the, the sew along itself and do that particular technique with the sew along. So that way we both kind of benefit. Um, you still get the instruction of the actual sew along step by step of how to do a particular thing. Um, but I, it's less editing on my part because uh, like I said, I'll mention it in the sew along itself, but then I'll refer you over to the website to actually find that particular technique um, and go ahead, review it, look at it. Um, and then once you master it or enough to where even so long, you know, at the same time and, and install it in that particular so long that you're, that you're doing at that time. Um, so hopefully that will be okay for, for you. Cause I think it's, a I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank everyone for watching my videos. Um, I love to upload the videos. I love to share my knowledge. Um, and I'm pretty sure that you guys love to get free content. So in order for me to keep uploading uh, free content, I just need you to do some simple things for me, some very simple things. The first thing is just to hit the subscribe button. So just make sure that you hit that. Um, so you're subscribed to my channel, hit the notification bell. So when I upload a new video, you don't miss out and you get to see it. And then also if, if there's an ad um, on my videos, they're typically anywhere from 10 seconds to maybe up to two minutes. Um, just go ahead and either watch it or do something else you want to do in those, uh, in those, um, in that particular time that that ad is running. So use the restroom, go get something to drink or something like that. Cause that way, if you let that ad run, um, I benefit from YouTube and that way I can still keep creating content and uploading it for free. Okay. 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 Enough of that boring stuff. Back to the sew along. Please take a moment to like, comment, share, and subscribe and hit the notification bell. So you don't miss a video. Thank you. And keep on watching. Okay, so first up is McCall's M7985. It is a top, and the description is it's a very loose fitting top tunics. It has a self faced yoke with forward shoulder, a upper and lower fronts with inside casing for the drawstring, has a neck band, front button close, closing, and narrow hem. For views A and C, for the sleeves or has sleeves for view B bias tape for the armhole finishing for B and C it has a shaped hem and wrong side will show for view C has a collar and side slits and the body measurements for this particular pattern is 8 to 16 and 18 wide to 24 wide and that corresponds to a bust measurement of 31 and a half to 38 for 8 to 16 and 40 to 46 for 18 wide to 24 wide. Okay, now taking a look at the line drawing for view A, you see that's the short sleeve. It has a stand collar button 
front, um, the elastic casing in the front and basically a flounce uh, for the front. And for the back, um, it appears to be a, um, a yoke with just a one long um, back piece. I'm not sure if it has a center seam or not because um, there is a line there. Um, for view B, it's basically the same thing as A. Um, it does not have the sleeves and it has a high low um, for the skirt part or the flounce part. Um, so that's the only difference with view B. View C um, is basically like view A. Um, it has the high low of the skirt flounce portion and it has the collar um, appears to be a collar and collar stand so that C and D is just to pull on pants okay okay let's move on to the um, suggested fabric choices um, which are linen cotton blends crepe and poplin so let's look at the linen this is an example of what a linen uh, type garment would look like Moving on to cotton blends, and it depends on the blend fiber content of that cotton plan, blend. You can have like a cotton poly, which, um, you know, could be more of a structured type garment like this. Or it could be a cotton rayon or more of a softer texture of that fiber, which will resemble this. Okay, moving on to uh, crepe. So crepe fabric is a more of a flowy type fabric and it just has like a texture uh, on the front, but it's more of a flowy. So this is an example of what a crepe would look like for this garment. And lastly, poplin. Poplin um, is what I consider like a, um, a dress shirt, a men's dress shirt type of uh, material but not as stiff or not as crisp, but it still resembles that dress shirt type of um, look and material. So this is a, a example of a poplin. So let's take a look at how um, the pattern makers wanted this to fit um, their silhouette, their ease that they wanted in this pattern. So I usually just, you know, chop it in the middle and use a size 14. So let's look at the bus. So a size 14 bus is a 36 uh, for the body measurement and for a finish measurement for a 14, it's a 48 and a half. Okay. So that's about 12 and a half inches of ease around the bus. Now taking a look at the garment here um, and look at the bus area, according to the pattern makers, they considered this um, a very loose garment and I'll just insert a picture of that chart there. Okay, so they considered this a very loose. Um, so that's one thing that you need to know. Um, and then what I also tell you to do is take a tape measure uh, and put it at that, whatever it is for your particular body measurement, okay? Um, and put it at that particular measurement and go around your bus and see if that's too loose, too tight, um, and see what your personal measurement should be. Cause it could be different. Like for me, my personal measurement for this type of garment, looking at it is not 12 inches of ease. It's about six or seven. Okay. And I will actually do another video about how to determine your personal ease based on different garment types in the future, in the very near future. Um, but just go ahead and do that. Take a tape measure and see if um, basically 12 and a half inches of ease in the bust is right for you. Or do you want it to, um, to be more or to be less? Um, and that's another uh, way of you to determine what your um, actual pattern size that you cut out should be. So go ahead and do that. 
All right, so let's go over uh, some sewing skills that you're going to need in order to do this pattern. You're going to need your basics, which is your straight stitch, your basting stitch, reverse stitch, um, and knowing how to sew uh, corners and curves, um, including notching. Um, you got to know how to do buttonholes, casings, a stand collar, a hem, and a set in sleeve. Okay. So this was McCall's M7985. Okay, moving on to Simplicity S9545. Okay, so this is a top. It's a V-neck pullover top in two lengths. It has options for puff sleeves, a sleeveless or long sleeves with elastic at the elbow and a wrist, at the wrist. Top of the bodice has gathered details and an optional purchase trim, if you want to do that. Uh, body measurements is 10 to 22 and corresponding bust measurements is 32 and a half to 44 and hips 34 and a half to 46. Okay, taking a look at the line art. View A um, has the long sleeves with the elastic at the elbow and the wrist. It has the um, gathered skirt or flounce, however you want to put it, and the V-neck. And it looks like it has a facing. Um, version B is just like A. It just has the short sleeve with the elastic at the elbow, basically. Oh, just above the um, elbow is B. View C um, is a sleeveless version. Okay, let's take a look at the type of fabrics, adjusted fabrics. Um, Batics, they have chambrays, cotton blends, gauze, um, ginnam, I pronounced that wrong, <laughs> linen blends, poplin, and shirtings. So let's take a closer look at each one. Batics, okay. Um, Batics is just a cotton type of um, feel, weight um, type of material that has like designs on it. I, it's just hard to explain, but here's a picture of it. Um, so you can get an idea of what that is, but the weight itself is just a regular like cotton. Chambray, um, think of chambray as a, as a lightweight denim. Okay, and here's a picture of that, what that would look like. Cotton blends again, we already went over, um, but here's a picture of, you know, one version if it's a cotton poly. That's what that would look like. And if it's a cotton rayon, again, it's more flowy type. Next is gauze. So this is what gauze would look like. Uh, gauze is, um, I won't say flowy, um, but it, it, you know, it kind of drapes close to the body um, and it has texture to it. Just think of like your regular gauze. Um, you know, that you use for medical purposes, but it's on, you know, fabric uh, has, you know, that type of uh, um, texture on the front of it. Ginnum is more of a um, checkered. So it can be um, a big checkered or a small checkered um, type of fabric. Um, and it can fall a little bit away from you. You know, it doesn't fall close to the body, it can't fall away from the body. Um, so here's a picture of that. Your linen blends depend on the, on the blend itself. You can have a straight 100% linen um, that's on a little bit of the stiffer side. Uh, it gets softer as you wash it, but more of a stiffer side up front. And here's what that would look like. Versus if you had more of a linen rayon, which is more of a softer and can, can give more of a drapier type of appearance. And that's what this would look like. All right. And the next one is poplin uh, and shirtin. So you can basically put those together. Um, and we already kind of went over that. That's kind of what a, a men's dress shirt would look like, but just not as crisp. Um, it's a little on a more softer side. And here again is an example of that. Okay, moving on to what the intended ease or silhouette um, of the garment that the pattern makers want it to be. Looking at a size 14, 
Looking at the bust measurement is a 36. Looking at the finish measurement for 14 is a 41. So that's five inches of ease. And I'll pop in the chart here and you see that that is a semi fitted uh, look that they're trying to achieve uh, with this. So five inches, again, grab your uh, tape measure, put it around the bus, put it at the five, you know, whatever your bus measurement is plus five inches and see if that is something that's good for you. Um, and again, looking at the pattern, looking at the bus area, um, if you think that'll uh, be a good fit. Or again, if you want to make adjustments to that, that will be your personal ease for a semi fitted garment, whatever that measurement is. If you changed it, make note of it for this type of garment. So, you know, in the future, what your personal ease uh, measurement is. So the necessary sewing skills that you would need in order to complete this is your basics again, which is your straight uh, basting, reverse stitch and sewing corners and curves. Under stitching, V-neck, gathering, set and sleeve, hemming, neck facing, sleeve band, uh, seam finishes and interfacing. Again, this is Simplicity S9545. Okay, moving on to our final pattern um, is the Simplicity S9470. It is a top, it is a peplum top, has options for side drape pleats or inverted pleats. Sleeves are in three lengths with an invisible back zipper closure. Comes in um, body measurement sizes of 6 to 14 and 14 to 22. Corresponding bust measurements are uh, 30 and a half to 44 inches. All right, let's take a look at the line drawings. So version A has a longer continuous sleeve. It's not an in, um, a inset sleeve, but it just is continu continuation. And it has the side pleats and it has the flounce. Um, and of course the back just has the center, the, the invisible zipper. Uh, version B is just like A, just has a uh, shorter sleeve variations. C um, looks like it is like a three quarter type uh, sleeve, continuous sleeve, and it has the uh, inverted pleats there. Version D um, is just like C, um, just with the shorter sleeve variation. And again, B and D has the invisible zipper in the back as well. Moving on to suggested fabric choices. Um, let's see, it's Chalice, Chamoose, Crepe de Chine, Double Georgette, Silky Types, Matte Jersey Knit or Soft Cotton Blends. Um, and what I forgot to mention in the other two um, is for us to get used to what type of garment these are what or type of fabrics uh, the garment is made for. And these are all woven. Uh, so for the jersey knit, but which that one kind of acts like a, uh, I won't say it acts like a woven, but the majority of these are woven um, fabrics. Okay, so let's take a look at chalice and most um, common fiber for chalice is rayon. So we'll look at a rayon chalice. Um, and that's what this would look like for this particular garment. Um, and it's flowy. All right. So going on to chamoose, all of these are basically flowy. Okay. Chamoose, um, again, is a flowy type of garment and that's what this would look like. Moving on to crepe de chine, and that's what I'm using. It's a Floyd garment, lightweight, um, and that's what this will look like. Next is the double Georgette. Um, and all the double means is it basically added another layer so it wouldn't be so sheer. Um, Georgette, and here's an example of what that garment would look like in that fabric. 
All right. Next it says silky types and all silky types are is basically everything that we just went over. Um, silky just means it's silky to the feel touch. It's nice and flowy. So that, you know, that's your chalice, shamus, crepe de chine, you know, things of that nature. So we already went over that. Next is uh, Met Jersey Knits. Um, and I just characterize this as not so, not so thin. It has a little bit of more structure of body to it. Um, and that's what this will look like, this garment. And last is soft cotton blends, you know just just a cotton a cotton blend and soft which means you want your rayons in you know things of that nature bamboo so it'll be cotton bamboo or cotton rayon so that that's your soft cotton blends there and this is an example of what that would look like all right moving on to what the intended fit of this garment is um so looking at the Bust measurement for your body measurement for a size 14 is 36. For finished measurement is 41 and a half. That is for five and a half inches, which is, I'll pop up the chart there. That is a semi-fitted uh, type of fit there. And I would say semi-fitted to me is like a tailored <laughs> type of look. When you go to a tailor, you have ease in there, but it's look like it's fitted for your body, right? Um, so again, using whatever your bust measurement is, add five and a half to that and put it around your bust and see if that is enough ease for you. Um, if it's not, change it up. Whatever you decide for this particular garment, looking at the garment itself, at the bust area, um, and compare it to where you want it to fit on your body, that can be your personal ease if it's different from this five and a half inches. All right, let's move on to the skills you need, sewing skills you need in order to complete this garment. You need your basics, which again is your straight basting, uh, reverse, uh, and knowing how to sew curves and corners. Um, you need to how to do pleats, um, uh, invisible zipper, facing hem, seam finishes, and interfacing. All right, everyone, thank you for um, watching this video and happy sewing.